fender bender sends a drag race way off track. It looks like a model car out there coming apart. You know, somebody stuck a firecracker in or something. January 14, 2004, Sealy, Texas. Racer Galen Smith relaxes before his run by watching two of his fellow drivers tear up the track. Probably couldn't ask for any nicer weather. Mid 70s, there was no wind. Clear day. It was a. It's about a perfect day for racing. Tommy Adams was the, the driver of the yellow car, the 69 Camaro, and David Hugo was the driver of the white Lumina in the right lane. The drivers get the green light, and the race starts as it's supposed to. When the cars took off down the track, everything looked so smooth. Kind of a relaxed run. Both cars left side by side. There was no unnecessary fish telling. No stupid moves at all at that point in time. Everything looked like it was going as normal for a drag race. Galen has been a friend and competitor of both drivers for years. Having raced against them several times, he has great respect for their skills. Tommy's been racing since 69. He was a true racer. If the tracks were open and there was something going on, he was there. David Hugo was also a very professional driver, a good smooth driver. They had a team that would, uh, that would do anything for you. As far as I know, Tommy Adams nor David Hugo has ever, ever had an accident up until that day. But both drivers' flawless track records are about to take a major hit with a heart-stopping collision, all caught on camera. David Hugo in the right lane looked like his car moved just a little bit out of the groove towards the right guardrail, and, and Tommy looked like he was going right down his lane. And uh, David's car actually darted across the track, kind of hit Tommy Adams' car right in the quarter panel, which uh, sent Tommy's car right. We knew that was bad. In the business of drag racing, everything can change in a fraction of a second. When David's car steers into Tommy's, traveling at 150 miles an hour, that's all it takes for things to go seriously wrong. Tommy got across the guardrails, and when it went right off the track into the grass, there was a small hump right there when you went off the track, and he hit it. He hit it just right. The car just started to barrel rolling. I mean, it went up in there and it just started to flip it and it looked like it was going faster there than it was actually on the racetrack. It's kind of a strange thing to see a 3,000 pound car, you know, 20 feet in the air flipping. It wasn't supposed to be that way and it didn't look right. A drag racer since he was 14 years old, Galen is no stranger to crashes. He's even had a scary one himself in 2010, also caught on camera. So he knows what Tommy's going through. Losing control of the car as a driver kind of gives you an eerie feeling. You just kind of hold on and stop breathing and see where you're going because at that point in time, usually you're, you're probably running well over 100 mile an hour and you don't really know what's happening. Like when we wrecked that car, I could imagine what they was going to. Probably felt like somebody was beating him to death. Back in Sealy, Galen rushes down to his friend where paramedics are already working on him. And they got his helmet off and of course they checked all of his vitals and checked all of his signs and they were unsure if he had a concussion or if he had a neck injury or head injury or back injury. So it was kind of crazy and at that point in time we really still didn't know how bad he was hurt because you know you, you don't know until he gets off and gets checked out. When a care flight deal comes along that obviously means it's about as bad as it can get. The care flight helicopter rushes Tommy to the closest trauma center. David, the driver who hit him, is uninjured and devastated about his friend. He was probably one of the most upset people there. I guess he felt like he might have been the cause of it or whatever. It actually emotionally scarred him to the point where he really lost the excitement and didn't want to get back in a race car again. The horrible accident leaves spectators in shock and leads to a lot of second guessing and finger pointing among racing pros. It'd be easy to say one of the drivers might have drove a little bit over his head or something. We didn't see anything unordinary. It could have been parts failure. I mean, it could have been something, you know, got underneath the tire. We really don't know. It happened so quick and so fast that uh, it's hard to say exactly what happened. The cause of the crash is never determined. As for Tommy, his stay at Ben Taub Hospital in Houston is brief. Luckily, uh, it wasn't as bad as it looked. He had bruises all over him, and they kind of hard for him to get around for a few days, but he had no broken bones. Amazing to walk away from something like that. Matter of fact, I talked to him about two weeks after that, and uh, he was already looking for parts to get another car back together. The driver, Tommy Adams, returned to racing. 
He died in 2011 from an illness unrelated to the accident. Drag racing is clearly a dangerous sport, but that's all part of the attraction. Anytime you uh, stick 3,500 horsepower in a suspended door car, it's going to add a little bit more danger, a little, you know, a little bit more excited, a little bit of fun. You know, of course, anything that's fun and exciting, it's going to be dangerous. You can't hardly walk to the store without having a little bit of danger.